Good morning, YouTube viewers and subscribers. So I've got several things on my table today. I've made some progress on this spacewalker, so I thought I'd kind of bring you up to speed on some of those changes or things I've updated. Uh, so this morning I got up and I coated this entire area with some five-minute epoxy, and I made sure I used a real um, disposable foam brush and that worked really well and that gives you just enough time. I made sure I went over and sealed the edges of this coat and covering really well and down here too. So that's a, one of the first things I did this morning. And I also the other day uh, made a few, made the cutouts a little bit larger in this, in, in the cowling and I've also got holes marked for where my high speed needle, or that's my choke lever and my high speed needle will go. Uh, the kicker is I'm probably going to have to make holes on the top here somehow to actually try and fix the extension rods on there but I'm not going to worry about that right now and I haven't cleaned off all the uh, marker from that yet. So I made those holes bigger so that slips on much easier now. Um, and you'll see here I've got a DX6E Spectrum DX6E transmitter here. This is actually the radio I'm going to be using in this plane. So the majority of the other things I did today were are were are within here. So as you can see, now I've got throttle servo and uh, elevator servo installed, and I've got my receiver, my switch and receiver preliminarily connected up. Now what I'm using here is this transmitter was given to me a few years ago by a very kind gentleman as was this little spectrum receiver system here which is a spectrum AR6200. It's a discontinued model um, but it was new as far as I know and it comes with the you know the main receiver and then this auxiliary receiver that has two additional antenna and what I was going to do with this is you may say well you're totally crazy for doing that but you know I don't really care because I've got some really nice foam adhesive foam tape here and I'm going to one of the the main part of the receiver feed this part back through here real quick. I need to haven't tied up all my wires or anything yet so this is all still kind of preliminary stuff what I'm going to do here is I'm going to attach my receiver here. Let me zoom in here on this one. Uh, put my receiver here with these two antenna pointing straight out like that. I don't know if you can see with my hand in the way here, but I think you kind of get the idea. And then this auxiliary receiver, secondary, I'm not really sure what they call this. It's a pain in the ass, I can tell you that. It's going to come over here on this side of the fuselage with the antennas oriented, oriented this way, straight up, straight down. So they're going to be separated, I don't know, by five inches and antennas going in different directions. Um, that's how we're going to do that. And one of the things I, I did here was I made a command decision that since the throttle servo should have zero binding and is not subjected to the wind turbulence or anything, I'm actually using a mini servo for the throttle. Uh, whether that is a good idea or not, I don't know, but I did that just as a means to try to save some weight, even though this is aft of the CG. <clears throat> I can just as easily take this out and uh, put in a, a larger servo also if I need to. But I want to show you some things here that I did here. These little craft sticks are wonderful rails for servos. And that's what I did here, is I actually just used, I made a, to, because this cutout here was set up for large or full size servos, I kind of had to make my own little box for this little mini servo. So I did that with 
these little craft sticks they're not really hard wood but they're medium wood they're definitely not like balsa but they take screws really well and then I also actually just went ahead and put them on top of this too because I don't really trust this wood so I've got double thickness there of some decent wood to actually have these screws bite into the other thing I did still incorporating things like this also was I put my rudder servo here in the back and as you can see it kind of sticks out and it looks kind of gaudy but oh well if anybody's staring at the ass end of the plane they should be staring at the front where the engine is plus from the top you know the fin is pretty much gonna well, the fin will come to here or the stabilizer so anyway and the reason I chose to do the rudder only as opposed to the elevator also is because I noticed yes I did actually open up the manual and took a quick peruse through it literally like 40 seconds or less saw that there was really nothing no surprises there and probably put it put it away because I don't really need the manual to go by to assemble an ARF I've done enough of these before and enough airplane builds but I noticed that they had a Y setup for the elevator and one of the things about the hardware that comes with these kits that I really do like is when they have a Y setup like that you can drive it with one servo you don't have to have two and they've got this little block this little metal block that has three holes in it one is the actuator and then the other two you just screw the uh, push rods in and with you if you use these Dubro type quick links or you know screw type links you can very easily adjust each one which is a very nice thing so that is hardware I will definitely be using but that's why I decided to go ahead and put the elevator servo here so I could just use this because I didn't want to go through the trouble of uh, cutting that stabilizer all apart putting a joiner wire in there and just having one surface control it plus you know just it was less work and I'm lazy so those are the changes I've made and the only thing is I've got a battery here I want to plug it in real quick and see if we can't get some uh, servo action happening here so let me turn this on So we can see here, elevator, throttle, and we've got our rudder going here. Now, I've also got, so this is just a preliminary radio verification, I've also got a Y connector right here, which will connect to each of the servos in the wing panels so let me turn this off turn this off there's one last thing I want to add on this video and I want to show you something that I found about the wing panels that I thought was really interesting are you not going to turn it off or what damn technology let me grab my wing panel here this is something that I thought was noteworthy and I know one of the things that I always hate uh, when I'm doing these wing servo mounts like this is that you always have to sit there and build up you know the blocks the triangle stock and the block for your servo to mount on and all that kind of crap well I was very pleasantly surprised to find that they've done away with that process completely and gone to this completely molded piece of plastic where you don't have to do diddly except throw your servo on here and drill four holes and boom you're done so this is a super super cool feature that I really really like about this airplane these holes are pre-drilled all you gotta do is drill some quick little pilot holes and bang you're done so let's see here um, yeah wow looks like I am still gonna need some extensions here just to get these wires outside so it been would have been just as good, I guess, if they had moved this panel in here. You would still need an extension. So I've got an extension here. Uh, I might have one more extension. Hopefully I do. 
that I can utilize to get all that done. So this is the culmination of, I don't know, three hours of work this morning. I was doing a lot of this kind of stuff and I still want to go over and epoxy coat this area where the fuel tank is going to sit with epoxy some more. But other than that, that's the progress now of this build and stay tuned for more updates. Hmm. Okay. Well, you're pretty talkative tonight. It's raining out. <laughs>